folks. This is Dr. Humpston, and this is PCHEM. And I have an Excel here, and we're going to walk through uh, showing the wave functions, the radial wave functions, for 1s, 2s, and 3s orbitals, uh, as well as the radial distribution function for uh, hydrogenic atoms. So I've set up here a couple constants off to the left. I have a naught, the Bohr radius in picometers. I have z, which is the uh, number of protons. Now, for hydrogen, it's just one, but it's good to include it as a variable. So if we want to change it to do helium plus or something, all we have to do is change one button, and then everything else will change. And Z over A naught shows up quite a lot, so I just made that its own cell, so I can just refer to that. I'm going to be looking at the uh, wave functions from page 360 in the textbook. And uh, I've actually gone ahead and already entered it here. So I have, I'm have i going to have a column for radius in picometers. Um, I'm going to have a scaled column where it's the radius over uh, the Bohr radius. Just simply for plotting, we're going to plot probably the x-axis um, as r over a naught. Okay, and then I have the 1s. So the 1s orbital is um, 2 times z over a naught raised to the 3 halves times e to the negative z times r over a naught. So even in the exponent, it's uh, z times r over a naught. So I'm just referring to this cell right here because I already have r over a naught. And then the angular component is 1 over 2 square root pi. So I have that here as well. Actually, I should have probably a, a 2 here and a 1 over 2 times this, just to be complete. Okay, now let's let's do uh, radii every 10 picometers or something. So I'm just going to scan this down. Let's go to 1200. And then the same with these two. Gonna pull these down. All right, let's take a look at uh, R and 1S. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna change the scale. Looks like maybe about 400. And we see it's just simply uh, exponential decay, starting high and scaling down. If uh, I wanted to plot less of it, oops, actually I'm going to make a new plot with these two. And it looks like I could probably go to about 400. And I want the same kind of plot. I don't need the actual points. So they're the same except look at the x-axis. Right, and so it's scaled as r over a naught. Okay, uh, the 2s orbital, I've already entered it here. It's 1 over the square root of 8 times z over a naught raised to the 3 halves times quantity 2 minus zr over a naught times e raised to the negative zr over 2 a naught times 1 over 2 root pi. All right. So again, that's referring to uh, r over uh, r over a naught. All right, so I'm going to pull this down. And everything seems to have filled in. Let's take a look. We'll go to 600 or so picometers, or about 11 
Uh, we'll go. We'll go to twelve. R of a nuts. Put our chart in here. And right away we see something interesting that there is a uh, zero crossing at two or a, uh, a node, right, <clears throat> that the wave function changes sign, which we recall means that there must be a node there. And okay, 3s, I've already put that in as well. Uh, I'm not going to read it, it's pretty long, but I can pull down. And I'm going to plot this now. Let's go to 20. Insert the chart. And we see two nodes, two zero crossings. I'm going to just shorten these up here a little bit. I'm double clicking on it on the axis brings up the controls over here okay so that's just the wave functions they all start high right and decay but uh, 2s has a zero crossing and the 3s crosses once and comes back over twice right um, it's kind of hard to tell much from this so what I want to do next is get the radial distribution functions and we'll plot those. Remember that the radial distribution function is uh, r squared times the radial function squared. Right? So this will equal r squared times the function squared. I'm going to drag those over, but I don't want d2. I want just keep that at c2. Oops, not that. c2. And same here. And so now we're going to drag all these down. And let's plot. We'll just plot all of them together this time. And we get this. All right. Now this is interesting. This is the actual probabilities. So I'm going to add horizontal title and this is radius it has um, r over a naught and we see that the 1s orbital has the most probable uh, radius at exactly one a naught. So that's that's the definition of a naught. It's Bohr's radius is the most probable radius for a 1s electron in hydrogen. 
And then we see, as expected, uh, for 2s, the most probable radius is farther out. For 3s, it's farther out still. Okay? But something else interesting is here, which are those nodes. Right? So a 2s is in the orange, and we have probability of finding it at smaller distances. And then there's literally a 0, and then we have our main peak. And then it scales off, and tails off to 0. Um, and so this is the probability of finding a particle at that distance. It's, but it's like a surface of a sphere, right? There's no, no information about where, kind of like uh, on the surface of Earth, right? All the people are somewhere on the surface of Earth, but it could be anywhere. But um, so, so like this distance here would be uh, the most probable radius. And we have a node at 2. The 3s has a farther, most probable site, but it has two nodes. And if we were to do a 4s, we would see three nodes, right? So the n number, there are n minus 1 nodes. And those are radial positions where there is no probability of finding the electron. Okay, I think that's all that I wanted to do here. Um, but just, it helps to, to visualize it. And we have these, these equations that are really kind of hard to, hard to make sense of and understand. And it can be helpful to show the graphs or figures. So that's what we've done here. All right. So this is probably what you've seen before. The radial distribution function. is um, given as figure 8 on your textbook in page 364. So you can get check, check that out and look at the rest of the discussion uh, about the S orbital. Okay. All right. See you next time.